goodies that we have here. I know. Welcome to this really um, wonderful segment. This is one of my favorite segments actually to host. Um, we are hosting this segment from our friends, Tiny Love. Um, we are going to talk about development um, through play. Um, if you haven't seen any of Tiny Love's products, I would suggest going to their website immediately following this segment. They have so much information on there about developmental milestones, um, about ways that you can enhance those developmental minds, milestones with infants, with your infant all the way through toddlerhood. Um, they have a lot of wonderful products, which we're going to kind of talk through and um, explain how those work through all of these amazing developments that your sweet little baby is going to start um, going through um, all the way, like we said, right from birth through toddlerhood. And that was one exciting thing when my babies were little was like figuring out how to play with them. Um, so it was really fun putting all these products together and listening to the fun little noise. Um, but there's so much more than just, you know, that enjoyment that goes behind playing and the development of the baby. So we have an expert here. Yes, we do have an expert because obviously we are not experts. We are just moms. <laughs> we're trying to have fun. <laughs> so we did bring a wonderful, wonderful expert here from Orlando. This is, we want to introduce Rachel White. She is from Advent Health Orlando. Um, she is an occupational therapist that focuses on pediatrics. Um, so she's here to kind of help guide all of you and help guide us through some of the product, a lot of those developmental milestones. Cause like Sam said, I was always checking like, okay, one to three months, what are they doing now? What are they supposed to be doing? Is my baby doing that? Should they, are they not doing that? When do I need to talk to the pediatrician about maybe if they're not hitting their milestones, things like that. So we brought in the experts, we brought in them in to help us help you. All right. So hi, Rachel. How are you? Hi, ladies. I'm doing really good. How are you guys? We are doing very, very well. Thank you. So do you want to tell everyone a little bit about yourself, kind of your background? Yes, absolutely. So um, I have been an occupational therapist now for about seven years. I currently work at Advent Health East Orlando, um, and I absolutely love it. Um, I specialize with pediatrics. So we work with children anywhere from a day old to up to 21. Um, so there's a big kind of range there. But um, yeah, I love what I do. And I'm excited to be here. I want to answer any questions you guys have guide you um, anything that you guys have. So, so yeah, if you guys have any questions about play or anything, please ask Rachel in the comments below and we will get to those questions as many as we can. I do have a, a question. So when do you start playing with your infant? I know that, you know, they come home and they're so tiny. Their vision is different from our vision. How do you like entertain them or play with them? And when do you start doing that? Absolutely. So you can start playing with your baby right away. Um, so at first, initially, like you were saying, their eyes are still developing. Um, they're still trying to, to see everything. So some toys in the very beginning that are going to be really good for your baby are some high contrast, some black and white toys. They also love your faces. So even looking at them, singing to them, um, right away, you can start with, with those types of things. Um, and as you get along and you get a little bit older, um, around like two to three months, they're going to want to start reaching and grabbing for toys. Um, and also something else I forgot to mention that you can actually start right away is tummy time. So I know it's the dreaded tummy time, but that's also something that you can start as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, and that's working on mm -hmm. a lot of the times that's their gross motor skills. So some of the things that I learned from the Tiny Love website, um, it, so Tiny Love has a really a lot of information on their site. They talk about um, the seven developmental wonders. So cognition, um, language and communication, 
um, fine motor skills, senses, your gross motor skills, um, imagination and creativity, emotional intelligence. And like you're saying, kind of echoing on you, Rachel, a lot of those things start with the primary caregiver. So may that be the mom, you know, whoever that primary caregiver, they are the ones that are, um, they're recognizing your, so I didn't know this, but the first thing that your baby in the first week of your baby's development, they have already captured your scent. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they have, and even they, they do, and so they've <laughs> captured your scent. And like you were saying, Sam, their vision is so blurry in the first, you know, they're only seeing very close up, like you were saying those bold contrast colors, which a lot of these tiny love products have, um, you know, that kind of black and white checkered is yeah, a they really have this great. Over here, and like some of these different toys, they have the black yeah. and white. I noticed mm -hmm. that the little, the faces, they make the eyes really big so the babies can kind of recognize that it is a face with the black and white eyes. So, and then they are big on saying that right in those initial gross motor skills month, like you're saying, is you need to, the putting them on their tummy to kind of start gaining that strength in the muscle. Correct. So definitely what you mentioned, it's a big thing for head control. Because if they don't have head control, they're not going to start rolling. They're not going to start sitting up. They're not going to be able to do any of these things if they they don't have the head control first. So tummy time is super, super important. Like you said, it does really help to strengthen those neck muscles and gain head control, even for tracking and scanning, scanning toys, scanning your face. Um, something that you guys have on your toys, too, is you have that crinkle paper, mm -hmm. which is awesome. So not only do they get that, that scent of mom or dad, but also they they're sent their hearing as well because at first remember again they can't see super clearly at first so even those crinkle toys that's what they're going to go for yeah and this one has like a rattle so you could hear different yes. things yeah because um, at first their their vision is only like eight to 12 inches is yeah cool. yeah it takes a good and everything else past 12 inches is blurry. And again, all of this information is found on the Tiny Love website. Um, if you go to their seven um, developmental wonders, they have a complete guide from, and then they break everything down in stages. So zero to one month, one to three months, three to six, six to nine, and so forth. Awesome. Yes. Well, should we dive into some of these products? And if Rachel, you have any input or you see any questions? Yeah. Ahead. So the first one, Rachel, we kind of want to talk about because I want to yeah. dive into um, their development and their cognition. So with cognition, tell us a little bit about what cognition is. So, um, so basically, cognition is just just like their ability to understand things, um, comprehend. So. So even um, I'll give you guys an example. So as they get a little bit older, a little trick that I do with my kiddos is let's say you have like a sheet or a blanket. So let's say you put a car underneath, right? So when you put a car underneath it, at first, they don't have that intelligibility and cognition to understand that it is underneath the blanket. So as your baby starts to grow and develop, play all of these toys, all of those kinds of things, they will start to learn um, these higher level thinking um, skills. Which is fun that you said that because there is a product over here that does that and we'll go through all of those fun features, but you put awesome. the toy underneath a blanket and you pull the blanket yes. off and the toy says peekaboo and yes. it's different things like what it, what happens when you touch the nose of the little animal and it makes a little sound. Yeah. So yeah. it's their little okay. wonder buddy collection. Yes. So, so cause and yeah. effect. Yep. It says hi. And Beautiful. if you touch his nose, he does something different. And then he has the crinkle and the ears as well. You can lay him down and he start, starts to snore. And yeah. you can put the blanket over top. And when you pull it off, he says peekaboo. It's super adorable. But that's a fun way of learning kind of the cognition and the cause and effect. If you do this, this will happen. Yeah, definitely. Right. And you think like, you know, you were saying, Rachel, it always starts with us. So like zero to one month, it occurs with us. They start remembering our scent. They start remembering our voice. Their reflexes at that time are to just thrive. 
How do yeah. I thrive? That's the cog- that's the skills mental process through which they understand the world around them, right? Like yeah. that's kind of how they're going to um, begin this journey through, you know, and becoming, you know, the cause and effect and the growing milestones and all of those things that they're going to do. So a lot of times, like you're saying, like even, you know, putting them on their tummy, like on a really sweet little play mat where they're gaining that and they have those contrasting colors um, and they're gaining that strength and that control. So that's a great, great way to kind of start that. And um, again, all on their website. So then let's move, I think after like cognition and we're starting to understand the world, um, it's like the language and the communication, right? Yes. So, so important. And that also, again, starts with us. Absolutely. So communication, one of the first things that it actually starts with is eye contact. So making eye contact with your baby and you talking to your baby and you singing to your baby, because eventually they're going to start to copy what you're doing. They might start making sounds like mama, 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 mm-hmm. or da, da, da. Those are the two most popular ones. And I'm not an expert on the speech, but I do know I work with a lot of speech therapists. The m mm and the duh kind of comes first. And then later on, as you go, certain sounds, different sounds that are a little bit harder, like the S and the R, those come a little bit later. So that's why your baby a lot of times says the mama and the dada first. Yeah. Definitely. And I remember too, with my little ones, I was told to, you know, walk around the house with your baby and talk about like the steps, what you're doing. Oh, I'm yep. opening the cabinet. I'm going to make dinner now. I'm grabbing the pasta. And it just, all you have to do to entertain your baby sometimes is just talking to them or, you know, picking up a little toy. Oh, this toy feels like this. And if you, you know, crinkle his little body or wiggle his head, you hear the little rattle and you just kind of talk to them. Yeah. And the more you do that, you know, Absolutely. the more they they learn. Absolutely. And I think it's the really the foundation of speech at that time. It's getting them the tones and they start with, like you were saying, the cooing and the babbling. And we mm-hmm. all love that phase. We Absolutely. all love when we hear them babble and mm-hmm. we're like, oh my gosh, or blowing bubbles, you know, or they're just like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's one of the best little stages. And that's all that developmental of that language and that communication, even those nonverbal ways exactly. of yeah. gaining communication and things like that. And like Sam said, it does it taking those steps and, you know, if you're baby wearing or you're going around the house, like, oh, we're going to, I remember I always talked to my kids like they were just a friend. Like I would just be talking, (laughs) like I was a stay at home mom at the time. So I'd have them and I'd be like, okay, let's go wash the dishes. Let's go do the bottles. Like, I just was like, this is my person. We're just going to chat, even though (laughs) they're not talking back. (laughs) It's never too early to start that. Um, Even as they they start to develop, you even want to talk to them. I love how you guys mentioned talking to them and describing things, even textures, because messy play is so important, right? Um, So messy play is really important for when they start to feed, too. You want to explore, like, get them used to as many textures as possible. Um, So even during messy play, for cognition and language and speech, you want to be describing these things to them. It's sticky. It's wet. It's dry. It's rough. You want to definitely be describing and talking to them about these things. Yeah. And that definitely like seg- segues into the next one, which is those fine motor skills. Yes. Which are and very that is my important. Realm. And I know you as an occupational therapist, I'm sure you see that a lot is working on those fine grasping skills. Yep. Absolutely. So and what are some very important, important things for parents to know when they kind of begin that fine the fine motor skills. Yeah. So it it starts pretty early. Um, It starts with tracking. If they can't see and track it, um, they're not going to be able to reach and grab for it. So um, I know too, you guys do have, it's like that lovely behind you. You guys have, it's, we call it an A-frame. It's like a wooden frame and it has those toys that dangle. These are awesome. You can lay your belly on or your baby on their back. You can lay them on their tummy and they can kind of look and reach and grab for those things. That's an awesome toy um, to start that process. So those are more like gross motor grasping where they're grabbing big objects and items. As they get a little bit older, we're going to want to start fine tuning that into a pincer grasp. This is super important because when they start to turn eight, nine months, 
or starting to introduce foods, they need to be able to grab those tiny little puffs. They need to be able to grab those tiny little pieces of food and be able to bring them to their mouth successfully. I see this a lot. A lot of kids want to rake. They want to rake it off the table and try to get it in this way, and then they get frustrated. So if you hand it to them in space, they're more likely to go with this motion to get it successfully into their mouth. Yeah, and I, I know one of the things that um, Tiny Love definitely recommends um, on their site is to kind of dangle it in front of their face. Yes. So that even though it's just <laughs> them trying to kind of reach for and start getting that kind of hand-eye coordination, which I Correct. think is like, super important. So starting them, you know, you see, you know, like the mobiles and things that are in reach or even if you're just kind of have something like you said, this A-frame where they're able to track. And then once they've tracked, they can realize, hey, I can raise my hand and I can grab. Yep. And then you also have the sound effects with the crinkle. So then you've got that cause and effect. If I hit it, it makes the sound. So it's you really the easy. Awesome. And then this little guy, when you hit him, he makes some little music sound, which is super adorable. And a lot of, so that kind of seg goes into senses. So mm -hmm. now we've talked like those fine motor skills, how important it is. Um, I just never really, I never realized that babies are very affected by touch and softness, which is yes. obviously why a lot, you get texture in a lot, some of these tiny love products. Like, you know, Koala, he's soft on the bottom a different texture on the top, a different texture on the ear. So there's like a texture, yeah, even you know, this little leaf. Everything is texture. so, there's so much detail into how they develop this because every product was created under these developmental um, milestones that they have. So when you see so many of these things, like even, you know, the crinkle, you get so many different textures. You get the crinkle, you get the felt, and then you get kind of a groove and then more felt. So what, what does that, why is that so important, Rachel? Yeah, so it's very important. Um, so we have a lot of different sensory systems, but the one we're kind of hitting on right now is that tactile, that touch, right? Um, so as we move forward, if we don't expose our baby to a lot of these textures, later on, if they're going to struggle with wearing different types of clothing, trying new foods, um, all of these kinds of things might end up being difficult for the baby if they're not exposed early on to all of these different textures and slowly. So gradually as they start to get older, um, you wanna expose them to more and more and more. Um, when they're really little, these are perfect. Like you talk about the, the groove, the paper crinkle, rough, smooth. These are um, amazing textures to get them started with. And then as you get a little bit older, um, you can start working on the food, but these are amazing. So that makes a lot of sense because I always wondered about kids that dislike the feeling of I know I was going to say that too. I that was so interesting to me as well as like if you have older children, you know, like it gets harder and harder to dress them, and they prefer like particular clothes. And if you yes. don't expose them to certain things, you see kids, they are wearing jeans, they're fine with it. My kids, I'm like, whatever you want. And it's so hard to get them to wear like certain things because I didn't do that to them, you know, when they were little and it makes so much it makes sense. sense. Yeah, it makes so much because my kids hate jeans. They used to <laughs> oh, hate yeah. jeans. Like it was mm -hmm. a really, really long time before they were like, okay, I'll put on a pair of jeans. But, and then I have one that's like, well, is it too scratchy? They say she uses the word scratchy. Right. And yeah. I'm like, just put the jeans on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, so it is very, very important to do these things. Um, and you starting or this early, you're setting your baby up to not have any aversions to these things. Um, so it's really, really good. And we all have um, our own things, our own textures we don't like or do like, but you're kind of setting up your baby for success by starting so early and kind of getting a jump on it. That's yeah. so interesting. I just, yeah. I really never, and I have, we have a lot of comments of moms saying, 
that they are, you know, for their first baby, they received all these textured toys and they didn't really like push them very much. And now they're like, man, I wish I had pushed them more on the, on the bait on them when they were little for them to kind of get the feelings of those different textures. And I think we just think, oh, they just want to feel soft. They just want soft things, you know, not things that have texture on them, but it is so such an important thing. It is such yep. an important thing. Yeah, and it's the time to I, I I always say I learn, always learn something new whenever I host, we host these segments or have new products or new brands because I'm like, man, I wish I had done that. And then maybe my kids would wear jeans. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put this rough stuff on there. Like yeah, and I know we talked, we dove a little bit into like those gross motor skills, but those gross motor skills kind of, you know, it's the bigger muscles. It's like we talked about the fine, which are those little kind of grasping, you know, let me grab that. But the gross are really important because that's yes. kind of what's going to set them up for crawling and for walking and yep. it's you know the trunk control and sitting up exactly. unassisted things like that right so what are some of those things i know we'd said tummy time obviously is one of those really the main, important yeah. the main one i think to get that yes first sense of control exactly so it starts with the head so tummy time started as soon as you can it's going to help with the head control but we also need to work on the core right so if our trunk and our core is not stable, we cannot expect our little babies to start reaching and grasping if they don't feel secure and stable. So we have to start working on these things as soon as we can. Um, have you guys ever seen, um, you can put your baby just kind of on your, on your lap and kind of shift them side to side, or you can take a toy, move the toy around, have them shift side to side. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of... Um, we call them pull to sits, but our parents normally call them like baby push ups or baby pull ups, where you kind of pull the baby up. Uh, and yeah. again, if we don't start working on these things as soon as we can, they're not going to be able to reach for those toys and sit up and then sit up and reach for them as well. Yeah, that's important. That's very important. And I know with this um, playset right here, the baby is able to lay on their back and obviously like pat at the toys but you could use it for tummy time. And then this does remove. So when the baby is older and is able to sit up, they could just sit right here. You could detach the toys and the baby could play with the toys sitting and grasping and moving around. Would you Happy say like, let's say if we start them on here and we put them on their tummies, because it's important because this with gross, it's kind of the rolling. Those first yes. things are being able to roll over. So putting them in a safe place, like, you know, a mat like this that's soft and that's, you know, that the baby, you know, it's cushioned, it's soft, it's mm -hmm. not a lot. So kind of starting them on their tummy and then kind of allowing, or even you kind of rolling them over on their yes. back and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, toys. <laughs> exactly. Correct. So yeah, just how you said, you're kind of putting the toys out of, out of their reach. So they have to roll over to get the toys. Um, but yeah, you can give them a little gentle push. You can actually um, put the baby too on their belly in front of that frame that you have, and they can look up and try to reach this way. So they can also, because what happens is as they start to reach when they're on their tummy time, they're starting to shift side to side. So they're starting to get those side tummy muscles working. So even that shift side to side kind of comes before they start to roll a little bit. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense because that's an important part of gaining those gross motor skills because then once they, I always remember like the first time your baby learned to roll over and kind of that like shock, like, well, they almost well, like shock themselves. Sooner than you think too. It does, like, yeah. Oh my gosh, wow. Yeah. It really, really does. It really And if, does. if you do see that as parents, if you kind of roll them the first time and they kind of do this kind of motion, don't panic. That is still their, we call it a moral reflex. It's their startle reflex. That is normal and it will integrate over time. But kind of at first, if you see this little startle when they first do that roll, it's definitely normal. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, it's almost, it's funny to catch. It's cute. As a yeah. new parent, because you're just like, whoa, what'd you do? And they're just like, whoa, you know? <laughs> and yeah. you're like, are you supposed to be doing that? <laughs> and yeah. Alicia from um, Tiny Love also said, there's a lot of information on their website, like Juliana has been saying this whole time to discover. And it, 
talks about movement and how the babies can kind of move. Yeah, and it breaks everything well. down, you know, through, you know, zero to one month, one to three, it breaks everything down and it does give great, great um, detail about those milestones and things like that. So like, let's say when, when should a parent be, um, I don't know, maybe like concerned or something, or there's some red flags that maybe, you know, if you're, let's say you've got, you went and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get the complete tiny love line. I'm going to put my kid on all of these things. I'm going to use all of this, but then maybe it, are there red flags for a parent that you should be worried about or talk to your pediatrician about or things like that? Absolutely. This is a great question. And I love this question. So, um, First and foremost, rely on the Tiny Love website because there's no possible way that as a mother you can remember everything. I'm an expert and I cannot tell you the specific week that everybody's supposed to do this. It's it's you're just not going to remember it. So definitely go to the website. So again, I want to inform the parents that it's a range. So if between zero and three months you have to do, let's say, tolerate 10 to 15 seconds of tummy time. I... And if you're almost hitting that three month mark and you haven't yet got it yet, don't panic. Just kind of wait a little bit. If maybe by four or five you don't have it, then you're going to want to reach out to your pediatrician. So as you move along and your baby develops, you're going to have check ins with your pediatrician um, and they're going to make sure you're hitting all the milestones you need to. So, again, the website's going to be awesome just to kind of check and make sure that your baby's doing what they need to do. And then you're also going to have those check ins with your pediatrician. If you're like, hey, they're not meeting this skill between zero and three months, the next time you go to your pediatrician, you can definitely bring that up. If they feel that it's something that we need to give a little push for the baby, that's when they would refer you to an OTPT or a speech therapist. That makes sense. Yeah. And I think it's important to be honest with the pediatrician. I think that some parents are maybe, you know, every parent wants their kid to be fine, if that's, you know, a good way to put it. Um, but it's important to also look out for them and be their advocate in a sense. Absolutely. And to know when it's the right time to have that talk with the pediatrician, if something is maybe not, you know, the way that you think it should be, always be open with the pediatrician about those things, because you are their advocate. They can't really tell you and they can't necessarily communicate with you. Um, and so you have to just be, you know, watchful on that. And early intervention is always yeah. great, too. So yeah. when you do recognize those things, it's something that you could take the sooner you take care of it or start working on it, you know, the be better it is for your little one. Yes. And it's definitely never um, a bad thing to let your pediatrician know. Let's say they're like, hey, let's go ahead and do an OT evaluation just to make sure. And then you're going to come and see someone and we're going to test and make sure. If not, we'll pick you up and see you. If we're OK, we kind of give you a little break, but we never lose track. We'll just kind of make sure that the baby's moving along where they need to be. Definitely. Absolutely. hundred mm -hmm. percent. So, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, these important milestones and these important things to keep your eye out for and, you know, be open and honest with the pediatrician and, um, but have fun with your baby, I think is the most I, important yes, thing. Play should not be stressful. No, it no. just should be something that is fun for you and your baby. Um, and also it's okay sometimes for them to explore by themselves, right? If you need Absolutely. like a little mommy break and you just need to like refocus and you put the baby down and you're sitting there and you're just kind of like calming yourself down, that's okay as well is to give them some space to, you know, lay and relax and explore on their own. Absolutely. Those are very, very important. So those two really important skills you mentioned. So one is self-calming. So your baby definitely has to learn how to calm themselves on their own. Um, when they're really little, we use a lot of things like the pacifiers with the rhythmic sucking. Um, a lot of white noise is very calming. Um, so that and also problem solving, trying to figure out on their own, put toys out of their reach, make them kind of work for it. Definitely. And that and this also, you know, when you have all of these skills and, you know, you're built also building that imagination and that creativity, which is so important. And I think Absolutely. that that a lot of that goes into the development, you know, at first, obviously, they're 
their creativity is kind of learning this new world outside of the womb. Like, what is this? What are these smells? What are these faces? What are the tones and these voices I hear? And it's, you know, that beginning of understanding all of that and going and going through the motions of that. And then it's like leads more into that, you know, yes, putting toys out of their reach, like, oh, I really want that sloth. Let me, you know, how do I put two and two together, like the cause and effect? If I reach my arm using that, you know, gross motor skill that I'm, you know, starting to build and then I grab it and I'm like, oh, I grabbed it. Like, okay. And then it's also that playing with your kids. I think that that is so important is sitting down and having that one-on-one -on -one time with them and that interaction with them, even if it's putting them on the mat and saying, you know, oh, Mr. Koala, you know, and shaking mm -hmm. the rattle and they're like, oh, what is that noise? You know, and I don't, that's another thing that I think that you can start that fairly early, even when, right when they're starting yeah. that tummy time is interacting with them. Absolutely. And another cool thing that they do too is um, a lot of their products come with these fun little cards that you can take out and read through. And it tells you different things that you could do when playing with your baby and to interact with them, which is neat. Kind of yeah. helps guide you, you know, and then later you could be more creative and do some storytelling and stuff like that. So Rachel, if you had a couple important tips for new parents or maybe parents that haven't had a baby in a real, I know we have some moms here that um, are like, I had a baby 18 years ago and I'm starting all over again. So I think that's basically being a new parent. <laughs> <laughs> to me, you're starting over again. So what are some of your important tips or tricks or just to kind of leave them with, this isn't as scary as it sounds. It's more, Absolutely. let's have fun. So one, don't panic. Um, that's first and foremost tip I want to give you guys. Don't panic if they don't get something right away. Um, two is make sure you have the resources. You kind of want to know where your baby needs to be developmentally. So it's very important for you to know what they should be doing in the span of zero to three months, three to six, six to nine. Um, kind of what you guys are doing now. You guys are reaching out. You're, you're getting um, knowledge on it. Um, but those would definitely be the big tips. Also making sure that you are following up with your pediatrician and checking in um, every time that you need to be um, just so that nothing um, nothing gets happens. Or if, if for some reason the baby is a little bit behind, you jumpstart on that right away. Um, the sooner you do it, the better. Absolutely. So remember, ladies, number one is early intervention is key. Talk to your pediatrician. Have fun with your baby. Have fun, for sure. I think have fun with your baby is definitely one of the most important things. Um, we want to thank Rachel for coming on here and joining us and kind of helping us Guiding guide us. through yeah. the products. We're going to um, say goodbye to Rachel um, and we're going to kind of talk more about the products in depth and just some of the um, fun things that Tiny Love has for us. But again, I want to thank you, Rachel. Uh, Rachel is here in the Orlando area and she works for Advent Health. So again, if you can take one thing away from her is definitely, definitely have fun and keep communication with your pediatrician. Absolutely. Thank you so we, much, ladies, for having me. We appreciate oh, you course. so much. Thank you. Thanks Bye, for guys. spending the time with us. Thank you. Bye. All right. Well, let's go through these amazing products that Tiny Love sent us. Yes. 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 Okay. So first up is um, their Gym Mini. And this comes from their Boho, Boho Chic. Chic collection. And there's 20 developmental activities that you can do with this set. So like I said earlier, there's a whole bunch of little cards that they send in here and they say really fun things. Um, I believe, yeah, they have, I'm one month old today. And you flip over the card and it tells you different things that you could do with the baby. And um, it talks about your baby, your baby's vision, how it's still developing and objects need to be close and clear. Um, and then you go up until 12 months of age and where your baby should be at. So this Absolutely. is a really helpful, quick and easy guide. And again, I can't stress enough how helpful the Tiny Love website is. 
Yep. They have so much information. So make sure you go and check it out. Um, I believe um, they did put the website somewhere here and we will, um, or definitely go visit their booth as well. Their website is there. They have so much information. And not only do they always include or include these cute little um, cards, but on the box itself, it talks about all of the ways that this one product helps your child. So I know we spoke with Rachel a little bit about, you know, or a lot about those seven developmental um, wonders, we want to call them, you know, cognition, uh, fine motor skills, gross motor skills, senses, all of those important things. And on the side of this box, it basically breaks down how this Jimny will help with all of those skills. So not only obviously we've talked about, you know, that cognition, the, hey, something's dangling in front of me. What is that? Let me put two and two together, you know, and we have emotions. Does this sound make me happy? Does it make me mad? Like, do I not like that <laughs> sound every, at all? Every baby is different. So if it does make your baby sad, you can turn off the sound or if you know, you're just trying to have a quiet evening. You can turn that off as well. And there's the website right there uh, that Alicia put up. I just um, put it in, highlighted that. Um, you know, also the senses, like we were saying, it's so important. All the textures, these crinkle papers. The baby mirror that when you do tummy time, you can put the mirror so the babies can look at each other. You know, the motor skills. Not only are you getting fine motor skills, but you're also working on those gross motor skills, which are so important for later development and growth and communication and I, it communication the mirror because baby sees himself and he's like who's that handsome fellow <laughs> you know like and they start they can start kind of talking to one another or as the ma or the caregiver you kind of put the mirror in front of the baby like who's that is that you you know and so it's all that communication it's all that talking um it's so important to talk to them. Exactly. And like I said earlier, you can do kind of story time, talk about the koala, make up a little story about the koala. A lot of these products you can remove, they're easily detached. So um, maybe you want to take this in the car with you or you want to take it in the stroller, all of these little cute things that and I know child. they have names. I just can't remember I know. what their names are. They do have Maybe names. Alicia can... Um, can put in the name because I know the sloth has a name, the koala has a name. They all have I like say specific... Mark is one, and I don't know. They have names and they're really funny. They are These really guys funny. over here have names too, but we'll get to them in just a minute. So, so Tiny Love does have this boho chic collection, and it comes in a few different other products as well. Let me move this play mat out of the way. We have their incredible rocker. Yep, another two-in-one rocker. Really, really cool. So I could does... again. I stress again. These, These are so easy yes. to collapse, and they are so easy to transport. So if you're going over friend's house, you know, or if you you're going to grandparents' house and you want to ensure that the baby is safe, I did <laughs> she it. did it. <laughs> Um, you want to ensure that the baby is safe in a safe spot. It's so important. It's so easy to take along with you, in all honesty. Uh, the sloth, Mark is a sloth. See, I said Mark. And, and then Janice, Janice is a koala. That That's one's right. my favorite. I love the people names. Mark Janice. And Janice. Come here, Janice. Where's Janice? She's our favorite. So, so who, Mark was the Oh, Janice is the koala. So we've got Janice on this sweet little two-in-one rocker. Here and she is again. And she's got little loops, which is really cute. So baby can kind of stick their finger in when they realize, hey, I have fine motor skills and I can stick my finger in there and grab it. And then it also reclines. There's three different recline levels. So depending on how you want your baby, you can go down or you could go all the way up. If you prefer not to have the rock feature on, there is a stability piece down here in these little 
legs pop out. There are two of them and you just push it till it clips and then it doesn't rock back and forth. Yeah. So and again, if you haven't added a rocker to your registry, I would suggest you do that because they're great price points. They're great gifts. And um, go with the one. This boho chic collection is so, so adorable. I love it. Can we see this? Okay, so here is their um, bassinet. bassinet that's in the Boho Chic collection. Um, they also sent a really cute books, book here, and that has like the newborn stage, three plus months, and different things that your baby could do inside here. Um, so again, they send all this amazing information that's on their packaging, but it's also inside their packaging with yeah, these cute little inside, books. Inside, if you can kind of see here, you've got an, a fun little mobile that works, that clips. So you can kind of detach and put back on. And again, you've got, you know, textures, different ones. Look, here's more. You have that, we talked about that, um, the importance of those contrasting colors, which are super important for their initial eye development and tracking. Because your babies, when they first, one of their first things that they're going to um, develop is that sense of tracking. On the small book full, you could do different sounds and it spins around right oh, here. Yeah, it does spin. Well, the little guy over here spins. He's really yeah, cute. Yeah, he's spinning. I guess I don't. Let's see. There we go. There's the sound. We'll play some music. So right now, um, this is in the non-rocking mode, but if you would like your bassinet to rock when your baby is moving around, yep, just the one push. And you push it up and then it rocks back to, back and forth. It also has the mesh right here, so it's very breathable. And one another cool feature is I know that we talked a lot about tummy time. You could actually take this little guy off. You just squeeze it out like so. And then you can lay it on. Oh yeah! Look at time. that. And you could take actually take this mat out as well. Here, so. so here's the mat. So you could lay the baby down for tummy time, and then you could put this on the floor where it circles around, and then you have the little mirror right here, the different textures on both of these things, and you have a light, and you have a light. Of... This will remove as well. Super cute. And then they thought of everything with this bassinet. I love it. Oh, look, there you it's moving. Going outside is also so important. Um, but if you want to protect your baby from those pesky little bugs. Oh, yes. A nice little cover. A nice little shade to protect them. And this is also very easily collapsible. And you yes. can take it with you. That's mm -hmm. why it's called the Take Along Deluxe Bassinet. It comes with a great carrying case. So if you are going to friend's house, you know, that first outing to a friend's for dinner or something, and you're stressing and you're just like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Should I wear the bait? What should I do? What if we lay them down? We don't want to lay them down on a bed, you know, because then you start freaking out. What if they start rolling like a tumbleweed? So this is very easy to collapse. It's yeah, very easy to store too, for like overnight. If you're going to grandma's or you're going mm -hmm. to like a hotel, this you're is going, a great, you know, great thing. to store and great to keep baby safe for those periods, short, shorter periods of time. But yes. So that is their fascinating. So make sure you add this to your registry too. <laughs> so much to add to these registries. All right. Pull this little right. table in here. We, we have, have the wonder buddies. Well, first we got to talk about the mobile. Yes up here that is still part of the boho collection and alicia needs to tell us of all the names again so we have janice we have janice we have got mark, mark and, and the bird i don't remember I what the bird's like name janet was. or something but that's too similar to janice so there's a bunch of different modes here. This can go onto your crib. There's um, five different sounds. I know they're for as far as like the music goes. And then there's white noise sounds as well. 
you could adjust how loud it gets. There's the shushing. There's, There's white, white noise. noise. That's awesome. Water. So it sounds like they're like in your belly. So you could get really loud. You could get, make it really quiet. There we go. Now it's better. Or if they're playing and you want some music, you could turn the music on. Again, textures, lots of texture on these little leaves you've got those contrasting colors on the bottom of her of the tail the feathers also on the beak so lots of real they have really put a lot of thought into these products and into all of the important developmental things that your child is going to go from zero to toddlerhood um so another and it's super cute i think it, it's it you know they have um different collections. This one, obviously, that we're showcasing is that boho chic collection. Um, so if that's the vibe you're going with for um, their room, um, even so, it's just a really, really cute mobile. That's so cute. Yeah, definitely. And there's it. a time you could do 10, 20, or 30 minutes. All right. I know somebody was asking about purchasing these products off their website. Um, I don't believe you could purchase. So Alicia, off their website. no, Alicia did put on there um, in the comments that you can purchase them on Amazon. And somebody said, "Oh my gosh, they have a lot on Amazon." So you can go on Amazon. Amazon I believe Baby, Baby List, List, Bye Bye Baby has mm -hmm. a few things as well. Um, and shop around because I know that when I looked up the pricing, some stores had it on sale, and that might be because of the holidays. So definitely check that out yeah and shop around so then they came out with these really fun wonder buddies for 12 the 12 month plus so different types they have three different types of wonder buddy so they have thomas and he is the i'm gonna say he's, he's like a, a rabbit yeah, he's, yeah a rabbit. he's a rabbit so here's thomas and then we have Coco is the mouse. This one's so cute. I like the little pink ears. And then you have Leonardo is the Here's lion. The Leo. So you've got all of these great little toys. Here, let me turn this guy off. So these are great for um, 12 months plus. Mm -hmm. So if you have an older child or maybe you just want to, you know, get something for your six months for Christmas, and then break these out in six months and play with them. Yeah, really and this is toys. absolutely. And so some of the fun things that they do, which is really silly, um, they play peekaboo, like Sam was saying. So you put them under a blanket and then you kind of one. pop them out. I have a blanket. You want to hold it? Sure. So turn them on. Hi. Hi. So he says hi when you turn them so on. So this is Thomas. Hi, so Thomas. we have Thomas here. And we could play play peekaboo with Thomas. So we'll just throw this over. Hey! Yay! Woo <laughs> so you can do it too. Like you could put them in a drawer and you could say like, go find Thomas. Where do you think Thomas is? And when you open up the drawer, he'll say oh, like peekaboo. Oh, that's peek so cute. <laughs> and then you tickle. He's got a tickle. Then he's got a bounce. <laughs> And then he's got a make him sneeze. <laughs> and then you got a feed me. So you feed him. They come with these little. <laughs> it's so cute. I hope you guys can hear this because it's so adorable. And then shake. There's a shake. <laughs> and then you could put Thomas to sleep. Night, night, Thomas. I think you leave him for like three seconds or something. A few seconds. And then once they lay down for a certain amount of time, they start snoring. Night, night. Oh, so this is a great way to kind of introduce, you know, I, I think at that 12 month, kids are becoming oh, more yeah. like, I don't want to take a nap. I don't want to go down. You know, they're oh, coming, becoming idea. more yeah. feelings. They're, having a little bit more control or they feel like they're having more control. So it's a great way to start teaching them 
you know, feeding and self-feeding and, okay, feed them, or it's time to lay down. We're going to lay Thomas down. And it's, you know, it's, these are so adorable. Like I seriously love them. I think I'm going to put one on my desk. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> Which one's your favorite? Do you love Thomas? Do you love Leonardo or do you love Coco? I like Coco, but I like Thomas's name the best. I like Leonardo. I think Leonardo's kind of fun. He's so super cute. So, you know, we've talked a lot about um, development and milestones, and we understand that that is a very stressful thing for some, but we also want to stress the fun that yes. you can have with baby all the way through toddlerhood and beyond. And, um, not and tiny only love, is it good yeah. for your baby playing with them. It's great for you too. It like relaxes you, gives you a new look mindset, you know, decreases the stress when you're playing. Like these little things are going to make you laugh too. Mm -hmm. um, so it creates that amazing bond between you and baby. So we got Coco, Leonardo, Someone said Thomas is currently on sale on Amazon right Ooh, now. Thomas. So that Thomas. little guy. So definitely an awesome Christmas gift I for think any. So. I yeah. Think so. They're I think so cute. Super cute. I love it. So you can find all of Tiny Love all that information that we went through. I know that it was a lot of information. We talked about those seven wonders of development. Um, one of the great things, you know, they have everything is broken down on the website. I can't stress enough. Visit their website. Talk to your pediatrician. Make sure that you um, have those um, serious talks with them if you feel as though you're seeing some red flags. And number one, first and foremost, have fun. You know, you have all of these great, great products from Tiny Love that help you have help you and your baby have fun um, and build on those milestones. Alicia's back. Okay, so we wanted to oh, know yes. the the bird's name. Yep, because we know we've got what's the birds? We know we've got um Janice and Mark. And then we are just wondering what the bird's name is. And we had so much fun playing with these little wonder, wonder buddies. buddies. They're so cute. They They're hilarious. Horrible. We love the peekaboo feature. Um, oh, and Dawn just added it to her My Registry. Awesome. So here, is Coco on right now or is she off? I could turn her on. Hey, yay, Coco. So Coco's going to eat. Oh, David the Toucan. David. <laughs> David, that's right. David the Toucan. That's right. So here's Coco eating her piece of cheese. I'm curious. If... <laughs> so cute. Yeah, oh, yeah. Interchangeable. So you can interchange, you know, if you get all three buddies, they could share food together um, and all of that. That's amazing. So super fun. So definitely check out Tiny Loves Booth here at Prego, Virtual Prego Expo in the Expo area. Ask them any questions that you may have in that Expo booth. Um, definitely we have had a lot of fun hosting this segment. We hope that you learned a lot about those developmental milestones. We hope we didn't scare you too much. It's not a scary thing. It's a fun thing. It is. And Tiny thing. Love does it right because they have not only do they give you the education, but they also provide you with the products to, um, ensure that, do, that those developmental milestones can be met. And it shows that, you know, they do a lot of research when it comes to their products and making sure that they create the best things for your baby, whether it's a toy or a rocker or a bassinet, you know, they're thinking about, they have your baby in mind and they're not just there to make a baby product. They're there to help your baby and those developmental milestones. Absolutely. 100%. So we've had a lot of fun hosting this tiny love segment. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We have another great segment coming up in just a couple minutes. So we are going to be signing off for today. We thank um, Alicia for answering questions on behalf of Tiny Love. We thank Tiny Love for allowing Sam and I to host this awesome segment. We want to definitely say thank you to um, Rachel, who came on here from Advent Health. Um, again, she's an occupational therapist here in Orlando, um, and she was able to kind of guide us in more of that expert 
um, knowledge that Sam and I, we have mom knowledge. <laughs> Rachel <laughs> has expert know no <laughs> and Rachel has the expert knowledge. So thank you all so much. Thank you again to Tiny Love. And we hope you all enjoyed the segment.